Good afternoon, folks. I hope you're all there. If you would, type your name in and uh, let me know you're there. Let me shut my door. Okay, so let's see. Yep. 05 and 06. Okay, if anybody is there, um, go ahead and write your name, type your name in so I know who you, who is here and I can keep a record of things. Great. Good to see you, Mason. Hope everything's hi, Sonia. Keep on coming in. It's probably going to be sort of a glut of names coming in, so it'll take a minute or two, but that way I can keep a record as they want me to do. And Sonia... Good job, good job, Sonia. Oh, you've already seen them, huh? <laughs> well, maybe here at another time we'll straighten some things out if you have some questions or whatever. That's good. Okay, Jason's here. Some of them might be having a bit of a challenge getting on. You know, you wonder if the all the schools in the country are going high school and college online. Can't you just imagine the internet crashing with so many things on it? So we might have some problem. Might have to send up smoke signals or something. Maybe what we'll have to do is uh, get online about five minutes early before 1230 so that everybody can get in and let me know what's uh, who's here and who's not. Sonia, did you get anything out of those videos that were saved? Good, good. Glad to see that. Maybe it's kind of slow because we got so many people on the internet now. Maybe we could rent the Civic Center 
have social distance between us. I have to get on the stage and get a lecture this stuff too. Oh, did you? Well, it might be some other folks having a challenging time, too. Might end up just typing up some notes and some directions and letting you look at the, the uh, figures in the textbook. And then we can communicate by either phone or email. Might have to get a conference call going. Okay, yeah, we might be overloading the system. Hey, Destiny, good to see you. Or I should say, I see your name up here. <laughs> Sonia, what are you saying there? Well, if I can connect, anybody can connect. <laughs> we're, we're not a technical generation, are we? Okay, well, let's give some time for folks to get on there. Yeah, I was just looking at my uh, email coming in, and there's a mess of them on there, like you say, Mason. Hmm. I'm going to try, I'm going to try to answer some of their emails and see if that'll help. So I want to draw up my screen. You won't be able to see me for a few minutes. Let's see here.
Oh, let's see what we have now. That's great. We got Tamika. You're here. Tamika Washington. Okay. Shaniqua. Good. Okay. Let me write you down as present. I'm sending you some emails, hopefully helping you, but uh, I don't know. Okay, Shaniqua, you're here. And Tamika's here. And yeah, Grace, okay. Ooh, give them a big load in there. That's good. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Shaniqua. Is it? Kira and Rose Madison Becker. Okay. Shay Wanna Wilder. Oh Shay, gotcha. You guys will need to remember how you got on last time, this time so we can all get it done before we spend 15 or 20 minutes trying to get in there. I know the internet's overloaded, so we'll just have to maybe get on even earlier. So let's see. Morgan's here. Okay. And Caitlin. And Courtney's here. Me, me, Moses. Is that you, Anthony? And Stephanie, James. Great. Thank you, Anthony. Okay, James. Okay. Elizabeth, okay. Good for you. Got on there. All right. And Nani, okay. And who, who is... Uh, M, three A's, N, A, M, E, S, S. Who is that? Oh, Cameron. Okay, is that your your handle or whatever? Cameron Whitten, okay. Great, thank you. Maybe if that's what you want me to call you, that's great. James Doby. Okay. Glad you're here. Okay. Okay, we're missing Michael. She's usually late anyway, isn't she? Got Michael and Megan. Samantha Kale. Brandon Meekins. Madison Oaks, are you there? I might be missing your name. Got Madison Becker here. I need Madison Oaks. Rodney, is Rodney not there? Rodney Powell, you're not there? Brandon Meekins? 
Samantha Kale, Megan Hayes, Michael Burroughs. Valerie, have you ever have you gotten no one? Mm. So Sarah Richards. Okay, well, we need to move on. Maybe they'll they'll get in a little bit later. So we're in chapter ten. And uh, you have your textbook, I hope. I want you to look on page 340 of your textbook. It's in chapter 10. I had connection with Courtney there, and I have no idea who... Ghost trial. Oh, Brandon. Good. Okay. What did you got there, Brandon? Okay, good. Oh, Valerie, you found it. Great. Uh, Anna Grace, it's uh, page 340. Page 340, it's in chapter 10. And <clears throat> we're looking at figure 10.1, 10.1. Tamika Johnson, on page 340, that's correct. All right, so let's begin here. Uh, as you look down there at the bottom of page 340, you see the three types of muscles. So what I want you to do is just for a second, kind of get your brains uh, back in gear in terms of uh, getting away from a, from school with a week. I hope you enjoyed that week off. I sure did. Got a lot of things done. But look down at the bottom of that page and you see uh, skeletal muscle, cardiac muscle, and um, visceral muscle. Don't forget those names uh, tell you where the muscle is located. Calling it smooth muscle is a description of its appearance, okay? So uh, you see the three down there. So what I'd like you to do is look at um, A and B, which is A is skeletal muscle, B is cardiac muscle. And what I want you to do is list three structural, okay? Not functional, structural features that separate those two muscles or that identify those two muscles. Three structural features that identify those muscles. As soon as you come up with some of those differences, type it in. Let me see if we're on the right track with all of you. Just between skeletal and cardiac, three structural features that are different. Okay, Nani, you wrote down uh, strided. As you look at both of them, now notice that is a that's a feature. You're correct, but both of them are striated. So that wouldn't separate them. That wouldn't differentiate them. Now the real goddess here, um, that's Kira, right? 
Uh, she says intercalated disc. That's right. That's correct. That's one structural feature that separates the cardiac from the skeletal muscle. Shaniqua. Okay, long and cylindrical. Okay, so what you'd want, to, that's correct. Um, the difference there between skeletal and cardiac is that skeletal is long cylinders of muscle fibers, whereas cardiac muscle is not long and cylindrical. It's branching, isn't it? If you look where the um, intercalated discs are that um, Kira mentioned, um, those, that's the end of the cells, and so the cells are shorter, and they also branch. Good, Courtney, that's good. Glad you're back online. That's right, Madison. Short and branched as opposed to long and no branching, long cylindrical structures. Anything else? You've gotten a couple of them. Anything else you see different, structurally different, between a cardiac muscle and a skeletal muscle? Tamika. That's correct. You're reading a book. That's good, lady. That's good. Very good. Yeah, the, the skeletal muscles can be multinucleated, whereas cardiac tends to be single. Uh, in terms of its nucleus, but it can have sometimes two nuclei. So I'm trying to get you to think now, whenever you imagine a question like that. And so you want to read the question carefully so that you answer what is being asked for. If you put down voluntary versus involuntary, that's not a structural feature. That's a functional feature. So you want to separate stru uh, structure and function. Okay. Good. A little bit of warm up there. Now, what I want you to do is go over to page 345. And it might be different if you have an older book. I hope you at least got the page. It's okay if it's on a different page. But it's entitled at the top, it says The Big Picture. The Big Picture. And right underneath it, you see figure 10.6. Okay, everybody should have that by now. So as you look at this picture, look at the top third of the picture. We're going to work our way through some structure. Not necessarily function at this point, but structure. Now you see over to the left side at that top one-third of that uh, figure, you see bone, <clears throat> and then you see tendon. And as you go down the muscle, you see where it's labeled muscle, and you see this sort of like a little thin veil over the muscle. You look right underneath the muscle, and you see the word epimysium. This is a connective tissue. And you can see you can pull the epimysium away from the muscle. A lot of times we don't want to eat that. Sometimes it's pretty tough to chew. So you see epimysium. Now move toward the muscle. We're still in the top third. And you see the cut view of the muscle. So I've been, so I've been sliced with a knife. And you see these um, structures um, displayed. We've got like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Got about 12 in there. Those are called fascicles. You can see the word fascicle on one of those extensions of those little uh, structures. So we've got about 12 or 13 structures there, maybe 12. And if you look carefully, you see separating those fascicles, you see some sort of a gray connective tissue. Mm, okay, I'll slow down for a second and see if you can pick that up. Okay, 
Courtney says it's figure 10.8 in the ebook. That's great if you can look at the ebook and look at me too. You got a, you got a split screen up there where you can look at the book as well as look at me. Okay, good job. You guys got a split scene screen rather? If you can do that, that's good. I've been able to do that on a few things, but not on everything. All right, now, as you look at those fascicles, you've cut them with a knife, and you see the gray stuff around each fascicle. That gray stuff is basically the same thing as the epimysium, but if you move down below where you see the word you see the word fascicle up there look right down below it and you see perimysium perimysium is the same thing as epimysium it's just dividing the muscle fibers into bundles And that bundle is called a fascicle. Perimysium is another type of connective tissue. Actually, it's the same type of connective tissue as the epimysium. Okay, you're pretty comfortable with that. That's good, Courtney. I'm glad you were able to do that. Kind of frustrating, isn't it, in some respects? So as you look at the fascicle, you see that sort of silvery covering it has, and that's the perimysium. Now notice that the perimysium goes into the fascicle and separates into groups the muscle fibers. So as you look around a group of little sort of pinkish things in there, uh, you see the silver around one group. One group will have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven uh, muscle fibers. So you see in this fascicle, we actually have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven muscle fibers. That one that is extended to the right, you see how long and cylindrical it is, that is one muscle fiber. So take a little note that, well, I'll tell you what, look right below the muscle fiber and you see that red arrow going down? It calls it a muscle fiber. That's okay. I want you to write above your muscle fiber in your text. I want you to write muscle fiber. Draw an arrow to it. And then I want you to write above where you wrote muscle fiber. Write muscle cell. They're the same thing. And I want you to write above muscle cell, myocyte, M-Y-O-C-Y-T-E. So there are three names for the same thing, the same structure. Myocyte, site is a root word for cell. You know that. Myo is a, a prefix for muscle. So you got three words that uh, depending on which book you've got destiny you should have have that picture i've got figure 10 6 and i'm on okay you got it great okay that's fine
So that is a muscle cell that's extending past the end of the fascicle or where it's been cut, and they've just got one muscle cell coming out. You can call it a muscle cell, muscle fiber, or a myocyte. Now, come down to where you see in the middle. You see that bracket, and you see it says muscle fiber over the top. So we're looking at that an enlarged view of that muscle cell. Now I want you to, as you look at that middle part of the diagram, middle part of the page actually, look to the left, we're on the muscle fiber, look to the left and you see this term endomysium. So you want to know that. That is the same connective tissue as the paramysium and as the epimysium. So you've got this connective tissue around the whole muscle, the epimysium, and then you find that the epimysium goes in and divides into fascicles, the muscle fibers. That is called paramysium. And then when you have when you look inside the fascicle at the muscle cells or the myocytes, you've got a, another connective tissue around each muscle cell called the endomysium. So those three pieces of connective tissue are the same thing. Now, if you can imagine this, it might be a little hard to think about it, but if you imagine all three of these connective tissues if you, they go back to the tendon, they all three are part of that tendon. What kind of connective tissue is that? Anybody got an answer for that? T type it in. What type of connective tissue is that? Epimysium, perimysium, endomysium. That's right, real goddess. It's dense, regular connective tissue. You're correct, Nani. And that's, uh, let's see. Stephanie, the question was, what kind of connective tissue is the epimysium, the perimysium, and the endomysium? And it's dense, regular con connective tissue. Now, what do you know about the, the, the collagen fibers in dense connective tissue, dense, regular connective tissue? What do you know about them? That's correct, Destiny. You got it, Katie. Oh, Caitlin, good. Glad you're here. Yep. Okay. So all three are dense, regular connective tissues. Got collagen fibers in there. What's different about those collagen fibers? Or what is um, an identifying feature of those collagen fibers in this tissue? They're strong and they go in one direction. That's right. They're not scattered like irregular connective tissue, dense regular connective tissue. They go in one direction. Very strong. Very strong. Sometimes uh, athletes have put so much pressure by contracting the muscles so hard they can actually break a bone. Uh, doesn't happen very often, but it can happen. Very strong. That's right, Destiny. Very strong tissue. Not much fun to chew on, although it's, you know, it's got protein in it. Most of us don't want to eat tendons. Kind of hard for us to chew them up. Okay. Now, let's go to the middle of that page again, and let's look at the muscle fiber.
And you let's come from the left. You see the endomysium. And then the next term you see where a line is drawn toward the muscle fiber or the muscle cell, there's the sarcolemma. The sarcolemma is the cell membrane of the muscle cell. So what is the sarcolemma composed of? Of what is it made? That's true. It's got some protein in it. Anything else? Okay, we got some lipids in there. That's good, Nani. Um, I'm not, no, we won't have any filaments yet, but hang on to that word. It'll come up. In a little bit, Stephanie. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. You guys are going going too deep in there. Uh, don't worry about thick and thin filaments yet. We're going to get there. But Tamika says lipid bilayer. And Shay says lipid bilayer. Don't worry about myosin and actin at this point. We're going to get there. That's not actually part of the cell membrane. So when you think of sarcolemma, you want to think of a phospholipid bilayer. And as, um, who was it? The real goddess said, um, we've got some uh, proteins in there. So there are probably proteins in that membrane also. Okay. Lipid bilayer. Now, what I want you to do is, is you're looking at the muscle fiber. You're looking at the whole muscle fiber. Over to the right, you see an extension, just like you saw an extension of the muscle fiber from the fascicle above. Here we have an extension that's actually inside the cell. Now, what I want you to do is to put a little line there, draw a little line, and write the word myofibril. Myofibril. Now, don't put down myco, myro, uh, myofilament. Put down myofibril. Now, <clears throat> you drew a line from that my, from that extension. You see, you follow that big red arrow down there, and it says myofibril, doesn't it? Now, what I want you to do is put a little arrow on back up where you put myofibril, put another arrow, and I want you to write the term organelle. Write the term organelle. Now, go back in your minds and think about chapter three when we studied a typical cell. It had a cell membrane that was a phospholipid bilayer. But you had other structures inside that cell membrane. And what were those structures inside the cell called?
what was the general term that was used to describe all those intracellular structures? Come on, somebody. Type it in. That's right, Shay. That's right, Kira. That's right. They're, they're generally called organelles. And so, see, here we are bringing up information from Chapter 3. Now, matrix, um, Brandon, that's that's not considered an organelle. But Mason, that is, you've got the right word there, organelles. The matrix is associated with uh, a substance that um, uh, connective tissue has fibers in it, proteins and various cells in there and so forth. So it's not a matrix there. But those are organelles that are inside a cell. Uh, those are structures that are inside a cell. They're generally called organelles. Can you name an organelle inside a cell? Give me an example of an organelle commonly found in a, any cell. Okay, good. We got some folks with mitochondria. That's good. That's one kind. Katie has a nucleus in there. Very good. You think of a couple of others. Good. Smooth ER. That's great. Golgi apparatus. Okay. All right. Just trying to um, get your mind thinking along those lines. Now, inside a muscle cell, you've got some of those things too, but you also have myofibrils as an organelle. You don't find that in liver cells. You don't find that in skin cells. You find the myofibrils which are organelles, you find them in muscle cells. So the muscle cell, as you look at that, you can say, good grief, that thing is really full of, of organelles. It's full of myofibrils, isn't it? Yeah, there's a destiny. You're right about the centrioles, sonia, the lysosomes and so forth. That's good. The rough ER nani, that's good. Those are all organelles. But here in the muscle cell, we've got a lot of myofibrils, and those are considered organelles. Now, I want you to go back a page. I want you to go, at least in this textbook, to figure 10-4, which is on page 343. Everybody should be there. And you see a similar illustration uh, where you have the bone, you have the tendon, you have the muscle and the cut, the cut face of the muscle. And then you see the various connective tissues in there, the fascicle. And then you see uh, muscle fiber. And so we're looking at a little bit, bit larger, uh, just a little bit larger picture of a uh, muscle cell. Now, what I want you to do is... Um, Look over to the right of that muscle cell, and you see that myofibril extending from the cut edge of the muscle cell. Now remember, the myofibrils are organelles only found in muscle. Now you see the word below called cytosine. Uh, let's see, Katie, what figure is it? It's uh, figure 10-4 in my book. And uh, I forget who my nation scam is, but the page in my book is 343. But look for figure 10-4. It says structure of a skeletal muscle fiber. Maybe that'll help you there too. Skeletal muscle fiber. You think it's 10-5 online? That's okay. As long as it says structure of a skeletal muscle fiber. Okay, that's great, Madison. Good. Maybe that's the way they've got it worked out. They don't always have everything copied that I've got in the textbook. Okay, some of you got 10-4. You got 10-5. That's okay. 
<clears throat> as long as it's the same thing. Now, as you look to the right and you see the myofibrils, one of them's got a circle around it, and the little line goes down to another line, which points to another myofibril. Everybody see that? Anybody not see that? No, not myofilaments. We're not there yet. Myofibrils. Go look at the myofilaments there, Courtney. That's We'll get to that in a little bit. We're still dealing with uh, just myofibrils. Now, right under myofibril, what is the word that is present there? Got a little line pointing to something in the cell. What is that word? What is it, Madison? Becker? You say, I see it. What is it? What is that word that's below myofibril? That's right. That's exactly right. Cytosol. Okay, we could call that cytoplasm. You could call it intracellular fluid. It's got a number of proteins in it and, and ions and so forth. Now, out to the side of cytosol, I want you to write the word glycogen. Glycogen is present in the cytosol. Now, what is glycogen? Okay, some of you are putting glucose. That's correct. It is a type of sugar. Mm -hmm. It's actually a, a, a chain of glucose molecules. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so what would you call a chain of glucose molecules? Ah, Courtney, that's it. Polysaccharide. So that's a type of carbohydrate, isn't it? So we have glycogen in our cytosol, in our intracellular fluid, and it's a source of energy for us. Thank you, Nani. So we have this, this source of energy in our muscle cells, and we can break it down. We have the enzymes that can break it down, and we can get the glucose and turn it into ATP. Now, right below glycogen, I want you to write the word myoglobin. Myoglobin. M-Y-O-G-L-O-B-I-N. That is a protein molecule that carries oxygen. So it's like a little um, spare container of oxygen. Yeah, we got to have oxygen in order to produce uh, ATP and uh, get our muscles moving. Um, I was looking up myoglobin. I remember studying it in grad school and so forth. And um, found out some new stuff that I didn't know at that point in history. Um, things like seals, S-E-A-L-S, -E and whales, you know, they can dive. And we would say hold their breath for so many minutes or whatever, sometimes 20, 15, 20 minutes or whatever. Um, they have more myoglobin in their muscles than we do. That's why they can stay down for longer periods of time. I think some people have made it like four or five minutes or whatever. Um, and they may have some extra myoglobin in theirs too, in their muscle cells too, but that's what the myoglobin is for. It's to have some extra oxygen for our muscles. We can get oxygen out of the bloodstream, but we can also store a little bit of it 
Uh, not a lot. Not, some people can stay down four or five minutes, but they, we're not like the whales and the seals. We just don't have that much myoglobin. Now, let's go back to uh, the center of this uh, muscle fiber, this muscle cell. And as you uh, look down at the bottom of it, you see the word mitochondria. Now, you know the purpose of that is to produce ATP. So there would be a lot of mitochondria in a muscle cell. They would probably, the person who exercises, uh, say regularly, you know, walks a couple of miles each day or something like that, they would probably have more mitochondria than, say, somebody who uh, doesn't do any kind of exercise. Because your body is dynamic. It can adjust to conditions. And so you, <clears throat> you would have maybe more mitochondria if you did a lot of exercise. Now, I want you to look at the top of that uh, muscle cell. Coming from the left, you see it says endomysium. And then keep, in going, keep on going to the right and you see sarcoplasmic reticulum. That's the blue material that you see in there. And of course, it's very similar to the endoplasmic reticulum that we talk about in most other cells. So you've got a color version there, I would imagine. So you see it's all sort of blue not necessarily blue in real life. It's just uh, done that way so we have a contrast. Now, as you move to the right and you see the endoplasmic reticulum, you see these little sort of, what would you color you want to call it, gold, uh, light brown or something. You see these tubes that are wrapping around the sarcoplasmic reticulum. Sonia, you said something about mitochondria and liver cells. Yeah, we would have mitochondria there. That's true. They certainly are. Now, you see that kind of light brown string that's coming down? It's actually a tube. You look up top and you see it's called a transverse tubule. It's actually an invagination, a folding in of the sarcolemma into a tube that goes all the way through the muscle cell. That's right, the T-tubule, Madison, the T-tubule. You can call it that, you can call it transverse tubule because it transverses the whole cell. Now, you can see they're fairly close to each other. There are a number of transverse tubules that go through a muscle cell. And we're not going to necessarily get into all of that today, but that's all part of uh, the structures that are needed in order to make the muscle contract. Now, what I want you to do is look, uh, look to the right again up at the top of that little muscle cell, and you see the word terminal cisterni. Now, you know a terminal is. You don't want to hear somebody say, oh, he's got a terminal illness, right? But terminal means the end. And then you see the word cisterni. Now, when you see A-E on the end of a word, that usually indicates it's a Latin word, and that means there's plural. You, you might remember, you'll have to remember when you get into the cardiovascular system, the cordy tendinii tendinous cords that hold our valves and prevent them from opening in the wrong direction. Isn't it amazing that the, the length of those cords is just right so the valve see, will seal perfectly? Just mind-boggling. Love it. Love it. That's why I'm here. So you see the terminal cisterni. Now you think, what is a cisterni? What is a cisterna? Um, some of you may know people who uh, have dug a hole, a big hole, 
and they have put bricks inside. They have made sort of like a little swimming pool, and then they cover it up uh, with a cover that's got a hole, um, some sort of connection to it, and they will catch rainwater off their roof into that cistern. So a cistern is sort of like a collection area. Uh, you could say it's like a pool. It's um, like a sunken uh, bathtub, so to speak. Uh, you could describe it in a number of different ways. But the cistern originally was made to catch water. So when people had a drought, they had two or three cisterns on their property full of water, and they could have water to wash and cook with and, and to drink. But here, it's a little cavity. And I want you to look straight down on the other side of the, of the bottom side of the um, muscle cell. And you see the word mitochondria. And look at that square just to the right and a little bit up. And you see you come down to where you look at this uh, box. And in that box, if you look at the bottom, you see the sarcolemma. You move to your right, you see this hole, this opening of the T-tubule. And you see the tubule goes up and over the terminal cisterni. They call the two cisterns on either side, not, not sisters now, okay, cisterns on either side of the triad, excuse me, the uh, T-tubule. So you get one cistern, uh, you got the tri uh, the T-tubule, and you got the uh, other cistern, and so they call that a triad. So you want to know that. So when somebody says, what's a triad? If I ask you what a triad is, you'd say it's the um, it's a structure made of three components. One of the components is a tri is the T-tubule from the sarcolemma, and the other components are inflated, enlarged areas of the sarcoplasmic reticulum. Enlarged areas of the sar sarcoplasmic reticulum. Two of those in one of the T-tubules and you got a triad. How do you tell the cisterni? Uh, uh, Katie says, from the sarcoplasmic reticulum. Good question, Katie. If you will notice, um, as you look at the, uh, the left side of that little box down there that we were just talking about, you see how you've got all these tubules of the reticulum uh, coming from the left side of the box, and then they all join together into sort of a inflated area, an enlarged area, don't they? So the just that area where the transverse tubule is, that's considered, it's still sarcoplasmic reticulum, but it's considered a cistern. Remember how I told you said a cistern was to collect in a lot of cases water? Well, something collects in there, and we're going to talk about it later. We're not going to get in on it today, but it plays a role in the contraction of the, the, uh, the cell. Does that help you, Katie? Okay, now, uh, some of you are asking me to repeat the structures, uh, the definition of a triad. Okay, the triad consists of three structures. It consists of one transverse tubule, and two, what they call terminal cisterni. So you've got two of the terminal cisterns and one transverse tubule, and that forms what we have called a triad. Okay, Katie, thanks. I'm glad that answers your question there. So between... The terminal cisterni, if you look back up at the big picture, uh, the big picture in the middle, find one of those uh, 
transverse tubules, and you see the two terminal cisterns on either side. But as they leave that area, you see individual uh, tubes going to the next terminal cisterny that hooks up with a transverse tubule. It's still all called the endoplasmic reticulum, sarcoplasmic reticulum, but they've sort of divided it up according to the, the structure and the function, evidently. Okay, good enough. Looks like you guys feel comfortable with that, Shaniqua and so forth. Okay. All right, let's go back to page 345. Go back to page 345. <clears throat> and we have looked at the bone, the tendon, the muscle up top, the fascicle, the muscle fiber. We have the muscle fiber in the middle. And now what they're doing uh, next is show you the myofibrils. That's not, that's, don't call that the myofilaments because the myofibril is, is uh, one of these organelles, okay? So you see it comes down. And now you see another arrow, and it comes down and points to the myofilaments, which make up the myofibril. Now, as you look at the, that picture, that little rectangle down there, I want you to look to your left, and you see thick filament, thin filament, and elastic filament. So you see the thin filament is that little skinny one. That's why they call it thin, sort of purplish, blue. You know, I don't know what color, color you want to call it, but whatever. That's one filament. The thicker one, this big red one, looks like it's got, a, I don't know what you would say on there, maybe like buds or something off a tree or whatever. So there, there are two filaments. Now, look at the, the big red one with all the little, looks like little globules on it, and look at its tip. And you see what looks like a spring. They have the bottom one labeled elastic filament. So we're now looking at myofilaments. Most of the time when people talk about myofilaments, they're talking about the one that you see is red and the one you see is purple. Now, look at, this, look at the thin filament and you see these little Z-type structures it zigzag up and they zigzag up or depending on which way you're coming they zigzag down that is another protein see most of the time we think of just the proteins that do this number but there are a lot of proteins involved in the contraction of a muscle and in the structure of the muscle so here you have this zigzagging line and you've got a thin filament, a thick filament, and an elastic filament. Now you see that on the left hand side, don't you? Go over to the right hand side of this little rectangle and you see that Z line or Z disc, some people call. I want you to draw one of those brackets from one Z line to another at the bottom of that illustration. So where you see that little, those little Z's uh, zigzagging lines, go from one of them, make a little bracket feature, and then hook it over to the other one on the other side. So they'll call that zigzagging um, protein, they'll call it the Z-line, sometimes they'll call it the Z-disc. 
but from one of those zigzagging lines to the next one, they will call that a sarcomere. A sarcomere. S-A-R-C-O-M-E-R-E. Hang in there, Stephanie. We'll get to the bands in just a second. We'll talk about that. You're on the right track, though. Now, underneath that bracket where you wrote sarcomere, put in parenthesis, the contractile unit of a muscle. Are you guys getting hungry? I sure am. I haven't had any lunch yet. Okay, so you get the sarcomere, and you know that's the contractile unit. So you can see when you work your way back up, when you get up to a myofibril, you got a lot of sarcomeres all in a line. And then you see you have a lot of myofibril. So you've got hundreds and hundreds of sarcomeres in every muscle, and they all play a role in contraction. That's why you can write your notes and shift in your chair and pick up a cup of coffee and have a drink. All of these things are proteins. Let's look over on page 346. We're going to go through this a little bit, and then we're going to call it a day. What do we get out of here? I think it's 145, something like that. 1230 to 145, I believe. Yeah. So look on the next page. You're looking at figure 10 10 7. Megan, you made it. Okay, you see that. Let me make, make sure you're here. Let's see. Okay, now we're looking at figure 10-7. Anybody not see that? It's on page 346 in my book. So what I want you to do is come down to the, um, the bottom of that. Uh, you can see, what, well, before you do that, you can see that little section of uh, myo, um, myofibril, and you see sarcomere in there, Okay. There's your sarcomere. Now come all the way to the bottom of that box, that rectangle, and look over. You see sort of a gray type uh, structure down there at the bottom? The figure says uh, structure and bands of the sarcomere, Shaniqua. Structure and bands of the sarcomere. So we're, we're going to zero in on one sarcomere. So as you see that sort of gray tissue or gray illustration down there, it's actually a, a micrograph. Look over to the right and you see the letters T-E-M in parenthesis 38,000 X. Now you don't have to know this, but the T-E-M stands for Transmission Electron Microscope. That's a big piece of equipment that allows us to see in great magnification the structure that makes our muscles. So that's what muscles look like when they take a picture of them. Of course, they cut them out of some critter and take a look at it. But you see how light a, a section is? Got a dark line in the middle. Working our way over from TEM, 38,000. So you see the light area, then you see the dark area, and you see the light area. Well, the light area is called the eye band, like you were talking about, Stephanie, the, light, the eye band. I stands for isotropic. It deals with light. It lets light through. It. It's not real, real thick. And then the Z-line or the Z-disc, 
That's the little zig line, is z, uh, zigging back and forth. That's that protein zigs back and forth. They call it a Z disc, a Z line. But you see the I band. Now look above, look above the what's called the I band, and you see it's mainly composed of very thin proteins. The little purple ones that you see that look like um, a spring coiled up, draw a little line from it, and that's a type of protein. It's an elastic protein called titan, T-I-T-I-N. And don't go put T-I-T-A in like the heroes they got on TV now, but T-I-T-I-N, that is like a spring. It's a protein, but its amino acids are different in the sense of uh, how many are present and how they're arranged, just like the words that we use. The letters have to be in the right sequence in order for us to communicate. So Titan is a certain type of protein. Now, depending on what your, which your little uh, band you're looking at, which little coil you're looking at, if you look below, you see a purple band, and that purple band is called actin. A-C-T-I-N, that's your thin filament. Okay, now I'm gonna, I want to give you just another couple of things and we're going to get out of here. Go back to where you see titan, T-I-T-I-N. That little coil, notice it's hooked to the Z line, the zigzagging line, and it's also hooked to the next thick filament, which is called myosin. So you can draw a little line on the edge of that diagram, and that would be a myosin protein. So you can see that band, that little titan, is actually keeping the Z-line and the myosin, the um, thicker filament, aligned correctly. They're not just thrown in there like pickup sticks. They have a particular structure that has to be maintained. And so titan is one of those proteins, and the Z-line is one of those proteins that help keep those filaments in proper position. Look in the middle of the filament, look in the middle of the um, illustration, and you see the M line. The M line is another protein that helps hold the thick filaments in the proper position. Last thing here. Come down to the bottom that picture of that rectangle and you see where the myosin uh, uh, are and you see it says A band. So where you have myosin and actin overlapping, that cuts out a lot of light. It's the dark band. Some people talk about the light band and the dark band. Some people talk about the A band and the I band. But that M, line, that M line represents proteins that are holding the myosin in proper position. Whew! You ready to knock it off? You guys are too tired to even type it in, aren't you? <laughs> oh, my. Do you have any questions?
Oh, Madison, you have to go to work? Oh, my. What about the exam? Uh, they're working on, uh, I think they're leaning toward this thing called Respondus, where um, so if you have a camera on your laptop or if you have a camera on your your monitor or whatever like that, we can ship the test to you and let you take it, but you can't move out of the way of that response. I mean, that uh, camera or something, they're going to tell you you cheated, so you, you can't do that. But anyway, they have not come up with a solution yet. As soon as they do, you can bet I will line it up with you. I may end up shipping you a test uh, through uh, V2L, and you'll have something like an hour and four, I mean, hour and 15 minutes to do it. And uh, you'll just do it on the computer, and then you can send it back to me. Um, that's all up in the air at this point. We'll get it done. But it sure is kind of slow coming. So don't panic, anything like that. Keep teaching the closet door. The more you teach the closet door, and the more you can do it without looking at your notes, the more you're going to knock this ball out of the ballpark. Okay? Well, Courtney, I'm glad you enjoyed it as well. And no, this, this stuff... Uh, Anna, this stuff will not be on that test. This is for the fourth test. So it'll only be the, th the third test. Somebody got a disappointed face mark up there. I don't know what that means. Maybe you're just ready to get that exam over with. I can understand that. All right. Uh, if you don't have any questions, I'm going to hit the button and end this stream. Uh, it is going to be saved, I believe, so you can go back and look at it again. But study for test number th uh, three, and uh, then make sure you start reading this stuff. Try to understand it. It's not hard, but it is intricate, isn't it? So you guys have a nice weekend. And uh, same time Tuesday. That's right, Katie. Same time Tuesday. And uh, we'll, we'll get through this and get you educated so you can go on into 211. Keep your hands away from your face, okay? Stay out of crowds. You don't want to get the, the disease, the coronavirus, anything like that. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, man. I appreciate that. Oh, <laughs> well, your kids will be prepared to become nurses, won't they, Tamika? That's great. All right. You guys have a good weekend. See you next Tuesday at 1230. Bye-bye.